everybody. Welcome back to another episode of First and Last. My name is Josh. And with me this week, we've got Joe. Hey, man. And Jimmy. What is up, dogs? Hello, good sirs. How is your week going? Uh, pretty good. The same as the last hundred <laughs> weeks of COVID. <laughs> I mean, a Each little week better, right? the last. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, everything's getting a little bit better. In theory. You know? In theory. The world is now a, a little bit better of a place for, you know, reasons that should be obvious to most. Um, I was I was uh, doing a weird... I had a weird thought the other day that I want to share with the group and wonder, you two are pet owners. Want to know if you thought about this too. And it's... Uh, you guys have dogs and I live with a cat. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, and like... The cat doesn't like eat human food, like at all. Doesn't get anything. Like um, it's not into it, or you are unwilling to. Oh feed no, it? He, he would eat it. Okay. He would. He would eat most <laughs> of it. But like, I was just like, oh man, do you just like, you just kind of like, love tasting stuff. You like t- like licks and tastes. No actual food. Like you eat your regular food, and then your rest of your life is just trying to get tastes. <laughs> Like, example is, like, just, like, eating whatever I'm eating. Something that, like, you know, gets on my hands a little bit. Like, not, like, barbecue sauce or, like, you know. But, like, you you eat a little bit and then you just probably have, like, a little food residue on your hands before you've, like, washed yourself off after eating. And then, like, cat's like, I'm going to sneak a lick on your hand. Like, you know, trying to sniff your hand and, like, Mm. sneak a lick. And I was just like, you just... You just love tasting stuff. Like, you just get anything you can get. Just, like, tastes sure just settling for tastes because yeah, if you I mean, eat it that's like that's calories then you know mm-hmm. oh you think you think <laughs> pete's watching his think, figure yeah you think he's uh well i mean he's he wouldn't be if he had a chance because you know he would eat the food <laughs> but it's just like always looking out even if he's just eaten his cat food it's just like what are you eating can i have it you're like, no you're just like cool i'm gonna sneak I mean, I I know people just like have food and just like throw food like, oh, this food's done. I'm going to throw it on the ground and my dog's going to eat it. That kind of stuff. I'm assuming, I don't know, how much how much human food does uh, Zelda eat, Joe? Um, She will get, um, sometimes she likes, uh, you know, the like grated parm that's like, oh, like comes yeah. in a canister. Like the oh, green yeah. can parm? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Like sometimes she'll get that on her dinner. Um, Ooh. like like Fancy kibble night. and bits and some parm yeah, on top just a little okay. parm like it's spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> it's spaghetti she night zelda fancy. yeah <laughs> i don't know how we figured That's that awesome. out but um it's like it's like just enough where it's like okay you're getting some cheese but it's not like we're giving you real cheese definitely it's like, not yeah but it's like it's enough for you to just like eat your dinner <laughs> <laughs> would wait would she not eat her regular dog food without the parm <laughs> uh sometimes yeah sometimes she gets choosy and just like knows that she can get a little treat or something before oh, dinner man. that would be I like a Clever that would be girl. like a wait i'd wait <laughs> out i'm like i'll wait you out you'll eat your food yeah exactly like you'll get hungry you'll just eat your, you're gonna eat it your lamb and whatever <laughs> i would yeah, think I, I think i was just su- surprised at how much animals just like like tastes you know, just little licks of stuff when they're not actually eating. Yeah. So if I ate the same thing, I guess, every day. Every day, every if you, meal. If someone was like, do you want to mm. like lick this steak? I'd be like, yeah, could I do that? I would, I'll lick that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We're would in the you, like, like lick- training phase. So like, which involves like a lot of like little treats, but like after like, a handful or two of some kind of like treats, then they're, they're not really as good of an incentive anymore. (laughs) And then you have to like switch it up so that she'll actually do the thing you're trying to get her to do. So Mm -hmm. that she'll learn how to not be a freaking little terror. What do you, what do you switch it with? Just to give them some, like here you could like use my tablet for a little bit, some screen time. (laughs) (laughs) She's got her YouTube channel. She subscribes to. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you got your Blue's Clues, <laughs> and you got your Clifford. It's all dog themed. <laughs> if May does, Content. if May sits and listens to Jimmy correctly, then she gets to 
She gets to watch an episode of Frasier. She's going to finish it before <laughs> Joe does. Yeah. Oh, man. Fall or have her fall in love with, with Eddie. That's the dream. <laughs> yeah, right? Isn't that like a thing that became when we went from like SD tube TVs to like HD stuff? Like animals like kind of started being able to see TV a little bit better. Is that true? I think that might be true. Because every time, it, every time there's a dog on the TV, I like tell Zelda about it, and she's never impressed. She's like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> I'm like, "Look, there's a dog," and she's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just could be her personality too. She could, might she just, could not just, just not care about TV not dogs. Interested. Yeah, <laughs> she like she could be so smart. She's like, I don't, "That's not a real dog." I know that's not a dog. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, well, this is not your number one pet podcast. This is your number one uh, first and last but podcast. It yeah. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. <laughs> right in. Right in. Hit us up at FNL yeah. podcast on the Twitter if that's what you want. Just us talking about pets our, now. Our weekly check ins about random things is kind of the little treat before you get your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> it's your parm. Yeah. And Joe, <laughs> for, anybody parm. That's, for anybody that's new here, what is their dinner consist of? Uh, each week we uh, cook a uh, cook up a tasty steak um, and just eat the uh, the front <laughs> and back of it. What? <laughs> just cut off the uh, the fat of both ends and eat it. That's how steaks work, right? The fats on the ends. Sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, we we take a TV show um, and watch just the first and last episode. Uh, we make some predictions in between of what we think is going to happen. Uh, they're usually wildly wrong, but sometimes we hit. Um, you know, mostly if we just predict that there's going to be a wedding, because there's always a wedding in the finale. So many weddings. Um, and a lot of the sh- a lot of times the shows are just like vastly different from beginning to end. So it's like, it's a journey, except we just miss out on the journey of it. <laughs> yeah, no journey for us. We <laughs> just we get the we get the ring, and then we're immediately throwing it into Mordor's lava. Yeah mount doom Mm -hmm. it's like going up on like the secret like walkway at the top and then just dropping down into a warp pipe and you're just like world eight please (laughs) i'm done with the rest of these worlds oh man yeah i think that's a extremely accurate description good uh it's jimmy show this week heck yeah and you're threatening us with a long one that's really all we know at the moment yes which I didn't realize I was doing um, because so the first, the, the finale and pilot of this show are two parters, but the finale where it was aired on two different days to uh, uh, one week after the other. And the rules of the show, because we're not first and last show, not, not the show that you're we're not anarchists. <laughs> We have rules. There are rules, yeah. We watch. So the pilot was aired as a two-parter in the same night. And on uh, the streaming app, it's just actually listed as one episode. It's not even listed as two. So hmm. um, that was that was where uh, that's where they get you. Easy decision. So we'll watch. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So it doesn't even break it in half as far as I know. I guess we'll find out because I've never seen it. But the show is Monk. Ah. Um, Galaxy Quest's Tony Shalhoub, because <laughs> that's, that's a fun name. That's what he's known for. Tony Shalhoub. Um, monk, huh? Josh, monk. do you know what Monk is? Um, it's uh, that, so that dude's name, Tony Shalhoub, the guy mm-hmm. who plays Monk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that means that there's a dude named Monk. He seems like he's a little uh quirky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what I know, I've never seen an episode of the show ever, uh, but I think I've seen, you know, like I walked by a TV and Monk was on once. Uh, and so it's, it's a quirky dude who's, I th- is he like a, maybe he's a detective or he just works with the police? Yeah, I, I will say, so, so we technically in theory know because we talked about it in the psych episode. <laughs> At, in the finale of Psych, uh, they're in, they're like moving their, um, they've been detectives for Santa Barbara, right? 
I should. You want me to? I not, don't remember where uh, the psych that was. That it was feels California. Right coming out of my mouth. Um, the <laughs> police department in Santa Barbara, and so, but, but, uh, they moved to San Francisco, and then there's a little bit about how they already have their own quirky, like, like solve every crime detective, and they, and mm, it's, uh-huh. and because that's where Monk is based. Gotcha. Um, yeah, on the same network. I'm, I'm assuming. I mean, really, this is just like a play on, is this just kind of a play on like Sherlock Holmes? Like he's just a super smart dude that can solve everything. I mean, that's what my, I guess that's what I just assume. Every detective show is based on <laughs> Sherlock with that. Well, I mean, not like, I wouldn't say like, uh, law and or like nypd blue or something like that is that but like, yeah maybe you could argue that with like psych technically too that's like a just a lowbrow comedy or kind of of this and maybe this is yeah. just like oh he's not a british uh super smart dude he's a quirky american man <laughs> that also yeah. i bet there's going to be a lot of similarities between uh this and sherlock holmes yeah. that's all i'm saying all right jimmy have you seen this I've seen like see, I don't I'm I don't think I've ever seen a full episode of this, but yeah. I definitely like know what it's about. Maybe just from seeing commercials or something. But that's pretty yeah, that's pretty crazy. Obvious. It's crazy that like none of us have really seen this show, but we're all just like, oh yeah, that's that show with like the OCD cop or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy, the guy from Wings. Yeah, Tony Shalhoub. Yeah, that's that's that show, right? Like, why do we know this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was so it was on eight seasons. Um, started in two thousand two. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I I'm feel TV like time. that's that's the mark of like a successful show if like people who don't even watch the show already know what it's about. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, um, it had it had it held the record for the most watched scripted drama episode in cable television history what? from 2009 until 2012 which is broken by the walking dead i guess um oh, in that in that episode with the most watched was mr monk and the end part 2 which is apparently its season finale Ooh. oh it's it's series finale so it had 9.4 million viewers wow 3.2 million of them were in the 18 to 49 demographic. You know, that small subsect of uh, most of people's lives. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, but that's probably like a tougher demographic to demographic to get, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would assume, I mean, I would say between 18 and like 35 yeah. would maybe be hard for a show that of what I think this is like a procedural to sure. like attract you know younger adults cuz they're off I don't know playing tennis or something instead of watching TV <laughs> they're getting drunk <laughs> getting yeah. playing drunk getting tennis drunk and watching monk am i right but but looking Ayo. on the wikipedia here like its time slot was like friday nights Oof. so getting yeah. drunk and watching monk is probably not that far from the truth <laughs> actually <laughs> actually accurate like yo i'm gonna have my boys over we're gonna get hammered and watch monk <laughs> get the solo cups <laughs> turn up the volume yeah. <laughs> um not reading Everybody's too far into up. it <laughs> not you reading know, too far into crunk. it jimmy it yeah. says that he was a detective for the san francisco police department that's just exactly what i said but thank was you. it okay you were saying santa barbara before, yeah that's where I... psych started i believe oh okay. and then yeah in the and finale they they're moving friend. he's like chasing after his girlfriend do you not remember this at all we watched the Dude, whole we first watched, and last <laughs> we watched we watched psych a hundred years it ago. it was probably a hundred episodes ago <laughs> yeah exactly it's a long time ago man nah it was I, like... I knew psych was in california that's what i know about that's what i remember about psych all right i definitely went back and rewatched and, and watched that whole series because it was nice excellent I would do it again. And I may. Challenge. Yeah. A new movie just dropped like straight to streaming. Oh, a new the new Psych movie? Yeah. So random. I'm excited. 
it probably didn't just drop. It probably dropped like in 2020 sometime, but you know, a pandemic happened and no one noticed. Uh, so, I mean, I think we all kind of think we understand like kind of the base of what, who maybe what monk is to police departments, I guess kind of what he does. It's obviously procedural and he solves crimes Mm -hmm. and whatnot, but what, what's the catalyst? What's the, what's in this first episode? What drives him to continue Hmm. or start solving crimes even maybe? Has anybody got any ideas? Um, I mean, is it too dark okay. to like have like someone close to him was murdered and he figured it out? No, I love it. Ooh. I love it. <laughs> and and it just doesn't so seem like the type of show. Onto the force. Yeah. After that. It doesn't really seem the type of a show though to like get dark or sad like that though. It's a drama. It is a drama. That's what. That's what Josh said. It held it's a com- the- it's a it's a comedy drama mystery police procedural. Okay. Procedural. And I'm it's excited. a yeah, it's a the award it or the like record it held was for most watched scripted drama episode. So okay. I think Monk is a janitor at the San Francisco Police Department and then someone's trying to <laughs> they got their board of crime um, you know, with their threads to the different like suspects. And then mm-hmm. after everyone goes to bed, he goes up there and puts all the threads to the correct people, so mm-hmm. that when the, the detectives come in yeah. the morning, he's done the he's done all the math. And then <laughs> so 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 Jimmy thinks this is Goodwill Hunting, yeah, starring exactly. a guy named Monk. <laughs> is what Goodwill what Monkey? We're going with. Yeah, I actually don't. I, I assume that we're walking in, and he's already like established. Like I would love an origin story, and I bet. This is just one of those shows. This is already happening. People are, are on the force are already like annoyed by his methods <laughs> and the fact that he's always right all the time, but it's obnoxious. And then yeah, maybe I, they I, like flash back to origins later in the season or something. Yeah, I, I think I'm kind of in the wheelhouse of that second part where he's just the kooky, weird detective, but he always gets his man kind of guy. Uh, and then I don't know, maybe his partner gets killed or somebody else close to him gets killed and that unravels potentially. He thinks it's a, it's a, it's involved in a bigger, not me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say conspiracy. (laughs) I don't think it's like, there's like a evil organization or anything, but I think then that drives like, we're going to have to watch, keep watching because he has to solve this murder and he probably solved that probably happens near the end or something. And he probably solved some other regular episode murder kind of in the beginning middle as they're introducing the characters. So that's kind of my thought. You think he solves a murder that that's his, um, that's the crime in this one in the pilot. I don't know what, I don't know. I don't know what the crime he solves is, but I think that's kind of what, Hey, this is what the basic show is going to be. Here's all the people around him. And then somewhere near the later quarter of the episode, his like partner dies. And oh, then he's okay. like, got to solve that next week, you know? <laughs> kind oh, of <thing>. okay. Sure. <laughs> I like and that. that, so that's, so now we're like, okay, now we get how the show works. And now we are invested because we met his partner, uh, you know, Johnson or something. And they were like, somebody killed Johnson. Got to figure it out who next week. Episode two. Monk, come back, please. <laughs> USA Network, 8 p.m. Fridays. Drunk with Monk. Yeah, we'll see you on Friday. Friday night. So that's my thought. I hope that he, uh, I like him. He probably does. It probably is just a murder that he's working on, and it probably often is a murder in this show, I suppose. But I, I really want this like first episode to be like a like a jewel heist or something that he's that he's. <laughs> He's just tracking down uh, Danny Ocean. Yeah. You said Jewel Heist, and for some reason I thought of, like, The Italian Job starring... uh, Or that, Edward Edward Norton. Like, he's he's the one that's solving the Edward Norton case. Any any heist movie. Yeah, that'd be fun if it wasn't always just murders. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's always murders, right? 
Sandra Bullock if you're being, you know, feminist. Did you see that film? <laughs> Ocean Sandra Bullock. Eight or nine or there's is the the oceans where it's all women cast. Have you not seen this? Oh, I think that's Oceans Thirteen, isn't it? I don't think so. I think Ocean er, Oceans Fourteen. We'll come back. We'll Oceans listen, Nine. Tweet at us. <laughs> they all have numbers <laughs> at the oceans? end, don't they? Yeah. So it's a Oceans Eleven, Oceans Twelve. That was are definitely uh, Clooney's. Yeah, I think there's a Thirteen there, too with Clooney. There is also I think Thirteen. The, I think the all female one is like Oceans Nine. All right, I said that number at some point. <laughs> Ocean's Eight is a film. Okay, so there maybe that's it. Takes place three years before Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> is that what? Is that what you think the numbers mean? Just yeah. the years. And one year after, lucky number eleven. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Ocean's Eight. That's the one with all the ladies. It's probably eight ladies. I would assume there's eight la- Rihanna's in it. Yeah, it's it's good. Kate Blanchett, Mindy Kaling. Oh yeah, it's it's a lot a, of it's fun. funny. That's a interesting. Yeah. I've never seen that movie. Uh, I don't think I've seen Ocean's Thirteen either. So, it's streaming on something. I watched it recently. Well, maybe I'll get to that. But before I get to that, <laughs> we should watch uh, the first episode of Monk. Because it's a long one, so we got a big old night ahead of us. Uh, well, we're gonna watch the two-parter first episode of Monk that uh, premiered on July twelfth, two thousand two. It is called Mister Monk and the Candidate. Let's find out what that means, and we'll be back after that. And we're back with from the first episode of Monk. It was called Mr. Monk and the Candidate. Jimmy, do you have a write-up? Yeah, I do. And I'm realizing now that I'm looking at just part one. So I'll, I'll move over to part two after this. But the full like Wikipedia version is like a page long. And it's just not necessary. So uh, Mr. Monk and the Candidate part one. A former San Francisco police detective suffering from an extreme case of obsessive compulsive disorder is called in to investigate an apparent assassination attempt of a mayoral candidate in which one of his bodyguards is killed. Yep, that happened. (laughs) Part two. (laughs) Hold, please. Uh, With an introduction to Monk's talent, his phobias, and his need for an assistant, Monk investigates the murder of the the candidate's bodyguard and a political worker. He determines the candidate was not the intended target. So that's kind of the, uh, the teasers. So we got Monk, an OCD former detective who's now a consultant. Um, we've got his assistant who's actually just his nurse, Sharona, my Sharona. Um, we've got the actual candidate guy, St. St. Something. Warren St. Clair. St. Clair. Um, and his bodyguard who's shot, uh, his like campaign manager guy, uh, the captain of the of the police wherever we are is it san francisco no they said san francisco yeah again yeah he said like the city of san francisco thanks you or something like that okay great um and that's sergeant or not sergeant captain stottlemyre aka sergeant tanner from fast and the furious what? That. I didn't. I didn't catch that. Uh, I should have caught Ted that. Ted Levine. He's in. He's in. Oh, I feel like he's like a cop in like a million things. He's oh, that man. guy. Call myself a Vin Diesel fan. Oof. I don't. I don't call myself that. You should. Because <laughs> you are. Um. <laughs> Stop um, it. We have Monk's dead wife Trudy. We see flashbacks of Monk's, her a little bit. Monk's car bombed wife Trudy. Yeah. 
So I don't even remember who said it. Someone said something very specific to a lot of the things that actually happened, which is that Monk Monk is kind of he's real deep into this former case uh, that he can't solve, and it's his wife who was car bombed four years ago. He spends some time kind of going over that. She's it was in a a parking garage of some kind, parking ramp. So he hangs out there for a little bit and looks at some old news articles and stuff. But mostly he's trying to solve this murder of this young woman and an attempted, supposedly attempted assassination of this uh, mayoral candidate. Correct. Uh, What was everyone's first thoughts of this show? Did you guys like it? How'd you feel? Loved it. Mostly. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Um, I like a good mystery. Uh, but I think my overall thought was that it was w- way too long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, it was, was like too too much of a first episode? Yeah. Um, like, I mean, I don't they could have did. Sorry, like, they could have yeah, the edited story, it down. I, don't, I just don't think that the story was big enough to merit like this has got to be a double episode when it's already an hour long show um like and and i get that it you know there is there's actually two murders but they didn't really spend much time on the other murders really just the the um the murder of the bodyguard that they spent most of the time on tracing through the campaign stuff um and yeah like (laughs) you're you're presented with like a couple shady characters at the beginning that you're meant to suspect um and then i yeah i just kind of was left like thinking like can we just like move along like (laughs) and like i checked i checked the uh the time on the um uh like the scroll bar like more than a few times to see like how much show was left and was surprised each time at like how much show there still was left (laughs) yeah could you tell, do you, do you guys feel like you had a sense of where the break in part one and two would have been? I didn't. I didn't even think about it. I'm like, like yeah, I mean, it is. Me yeah. Because what you obviously have like bulls about this because. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, because this happens all the time where they air episode one and two back to back and and maybe they're not always the same like overall like complete one complete plot but i'm wondering i'd be interested to know like yeah what they're what they're building what what's what happened in in the second half that they really needed to keep to the second half Yeah, I feel like I had no concept of time while we were watching it, and I didn't like push pause and see how far in we were. When you first said it, my thought would have been when Sharona quit, I guess, because then it's like, what's what's Monk gonna do? Mm -hmm. You know. But I I have no idea if that was with twenty minutes Mm -hmm. left or that was with forty five minutes left. You know. So, I'm not sure. Um. So at one point, this is where I this is where I think my the show started going a little downhill for me. I thought this was just okay, but I have <laughs> currently I have no wish to watch the second episode, much less this finale that we're going to watch. Uh, that this is like Mr. Awesome. Bean meets Sherlock things. Holmes, like <laughs> you. Yeah, this is like. Yeah, but it's the the problem is so here we go. I wrote a lot of notes. Um, it start the first thing that happens is it starts off as this assassin. So right away, I guess it, I guess that's okay because right away I thought, oh, some doofus assassin tries to shoot like the mayor and he f- completely misses. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was like, how is a? Because then they were like. When they were investigating it originally, he was like, oh, he wrapped his uh, gun hilt around the blinds thing. It's, that's Green Beret stuff. And I'm like, exactly. okay, there's no way he's going to miss. So, mm-hmm. But that's actually put to rest because 
put to rest. That's fine. Because he was actually trying to kill the bodyguard. Yeah. Perfect. But Monk's walking around, like, touching all the um, poles mm-hmm. outside, like, halfway through. Because he's, like, walking somewhere to do something. And then a car chases him, like, comically. <laughs> like around trying to just like run him over and he just like barely misses. Maybe this is more Mr. Magoo than uh, Mr. Bean. <laughs> One of the, uh, but so Definitely that I'm like, uh, yeah, this is just really silly. I, I think so. Like monk is supposed to be like this Sherlockian super smart guy, but he's obviously got some like mental issues now kind of i'm assuming he got kind of developed this based on the fact that his wife died is mm-hmm. that what you guys assumed like yeah, he wasn't right. they specifically said like that this came from some sort of trauma yeah okay so but so basically everyone around monk acts dumber than what a normal person would act i feel like mm. yeah especially therefore, for like, then, detectives <laughs> yeah therefore then making him seem smarter mm. like um for I mean, mm-hmm. the the wife of the candidate uh, of the mayor guy, she said, I mean, this is just bad writing, but she said <laughs> every marriage is stressful. That's why they call it marriage. Yeah. Nothing about so her character. That made me want to you. That made like me want to turn You were the supposed thing off. to not <laughs> um, like her. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. You're definitely um, supposed to think it was her. Yeah. Yeah. When the cops... When the cops went to go arrest the suspect originally, mm-hmm. and he ended up being in a wheelchair, yeah, they were like, "We're like one hundred percent, it's this guy." Yeah, and then yeah. they walk up and they're like, "I'm in a wheelchair. Obviously, it wasn't me because I used to be <laughs> no six questions. five, but now I sit down." Uh-huh. Um, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, no more questions. They're like, we're done they're like "Oh, we're sorry. Yeah. We're Back super to the sorry." Board. <laughs> and then they leave, and then like. Obviously, the monk goes, wait a minute. His shoes were scuffed. Obviously, his legs work. And then they're like, crap. And then they run it, try to go back and get him. Monk, like, Mr. Magoo's up a ladder and then can't do it. So the guy gets away. And then the cops just <laughs> yell at Monk for having, because he let them yeah, all get away. And I was like, you guys didn't do cop things at all. <laughs> that was, How in the world? <laughs> that was the part I really liked, though, that so they're going back to get this <laughs> guy that they realize, oh, no, wait, he just lied to us. <laughs> um and like monk can see him like climbing down a fire escape like climbing down this ladder and so monk, monk tries to climb up the ladder but then like he has like a fear of heights so he gets frozen <laughs> and the guy just like yeah. climbs That's past the thing. him it, it is it is I thought that built was as funny. a comedy as well and it's just kind of <laughs> Little... quirky well yeah no but so those parts like when he was trying to like get his keys out of the dead guy's casket and he made the guy like raise the dead guy raise his hand with his dental floss and when he gets trapped Mm -hmm. up on the ladder and the guy's like excuse me and he goes down like those are like funny things yeah like those are actually funny Mm. uh it's just that the people i just feel like everyone around monk isn't natural and therefore it doesn't work like sharona at the end of the episode (laughs) <laughs> he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna follow this murderer instead of into not. the sewers <laughs> instead of just waiting by this door and just telling all of the cops where he went because their cops are within one minute of her True. you yeah. know it's like that wouldn't happen <laughs> yeah i think part of that problem is because yeah it is a comedy and it's a little silly um but it is like somewhat serious because it's a mystery crime thing um and so you have elements where the cops like all of the cops especially like the lieutenant um like are Mm. they're part of like the serious part of the show um and then when they get involved in the comedy Mm -hmm. it gets a little weird like (laughs) like it would be one thing if like the cops were just shown as presented as just bumbling idiots and they're just like (laughs) wait a second that guy could actually walk like (laughs) like right. yeah but like the cops, that would be funny but but the cops also like get insulted when like monk is like no it's actually like this and they're like oh well we could have figured that out or yeah. something like that and you're like but you're all doofuses apparently yeah the, Just, the cops are like they're part of like in the in the stew of this show they're like the serious spices <laughs> they're like black pepper Keep and paprika <laughs> um <laughs> 
but they're somehow sweet and sugary. They're a barbecue sauce. <laughs> I'm, so I would say I don't think this is necessarily a problem for any casual viewer of this show because I feel like I went into it critical because yeah. mm-hmm. we're criticizing the show essentially, you know, and and I was paying really close attention. I would never pay this much attention right. to like this show if I was just like, let's watch Monk, you know, mm-hmm. I'd be like texting and whatever. But I was just yeah. like, what did she say? Why is she doing that? Like, what's happening? <laughs> like, why are these things? So it kind of pulled me out a little bit. So I'm like, yeah, they it just it's 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 writing issues. I think they need to figure out a way to blend yeah. those two worlds a little bit better. It's first episode. Yeah. So I'm okay. Sure it so two gets things. One, there's one thing that you guys didn't mention. I'm surprised. It, maybe it's in your notes somewhere, Josh. The one thing that pulled me out. As far as writing wise and like, wait, what is that Monk's whole big, um, like gotcha, whatever, figure out, explain the who done it essentially to where it's all the campaign manager is that he, he notices in like the film of the, of the sh- of the shooting that the campaign manager is pointing to the window where the assassinator assassinator assassin <laughs> edit that I love uh, it. Where, it's where, not right where but i is, love it up, up in this building and monks like he couldn't possibly had heard the shot and seen the guy in this like one in a million you know window and so then he has his has nurse mm-hmm. sharona firing a starter pistol like firing blanks from a random window and and ask the guy to find it and he can't figure out where she is then the actual assassin is Mm -hmm. back shooting and they all instantly know where he is she saw but like there was no like line like oh he's in the building across sharona did it was just like they all even on the ground were all just immediately looking up at him and i'm just like you just undid this five minute like explanation. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, oh, Actually, it is pretty easy to see where he's at. <laughs> oh crap. You are Let right. This guy I go. figured that out. <laughs> so, so You're that's fine. My, my that's n- my fault. Number, Back one. To square number one. two is that I, I read that they like shopped this show for like a few years, like trying to find Tony Shalhoub essentially, who I do think he is perfect in this role. He's just, he he's just out he's just outrageous and he's excellent and I love him so much. He is good in the show. Yeah, it's probably. Not I necessary. do agree with the captain though. He shouldn't have a um, gun. But so like they like little things like that you'd think they would have fleshed out like the whole who done the whole two episode thing like and how that technically worked out you'd think you would have that figured out. Um. So that's just kind of that irked me a little bit. Yeah, there's things there's things in like script writing and story writing that I feel like when you write something down, like as maybe the writer, you're like, cool, this works out. But it's just like you got to ask like to like another (laughs) human to say, does this make sense? Like, (laughs) could this could this happen? Does this like like another one is when they thought they knew who the suspect was and they went to that guy's house to arrest him and he ended up being in a wheelchair, they brought Mm. Monk with for the raid. They would not have brought the civilian Monk there Mm -hmm. while they were arresting him. They would have got him, arrested him, and then been like, hey, Monk, now can you come? Yeah. Now that it's like not a like literal active scene they specifically <laughs> hey, called monk on the way like hey man yeah oh, come on. they're like hey we're not gonna do this we're not gonna do this we're not gonna raid this assassinator's house mm-hmm. without you because that makes any sense <laughs> just another example of like why the cops just being dumber like to yeah. make monk be able to do stuff yeah it puts him at the uh yeah. At the place Nothing where he can notice something else. Monk. Right, right. I mean, 
They could have even just been like, hey, we're about to arrest this guy. He lives like here. Could you just drive to the location and like wait outside or something? Like even that would have made more sense. Mm -hmm. But bringing him up (laughs) to the guy's apartment while they like had because I know I didn't I thought that's what they were doing they were they brought him up there after they like, arrested him but then I saw like one of the cops in mm-hmm. front of him had like a battering ram in his hand right. and I was like oh well you don't need a battering ram if you've already arrested the guy do you I will say I did I, like as a pilot overall yeah. besides the fact that it was basically a movie which is unnecessary uh they they set up Monk well <laughs> a little long yeah um. They set up like a season's worth or whatever, a series worth, I guess we'll find out, of like this wife's case that he's going to be, you know, his long, his long game. Yeah. It's um, like side project. He's trying to get back. It, it was more of an origin story than I thought of. I mean, I thought it was going to be like not like it's just as far as he's not already on the force. Um, I didn't write that as a prediction, but I should have. That seems easy money. Um, <laughs> I had a look at my <laughs> sheet for a second. Um, <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know, he he's talking. He's got to get clearance from like some sort of therapist that he's talking to. Doctor Kroger was his name. So there's like that whole deal. I don't know. They they set up a lot of little things that they can come back to. Captain Stottlemyre who like kind of hates him. They clearly have some sort of past relationship where he was the one who took away his badge. Maybe he killed the wife. Yeah. I mean, his badge needed to be taken away. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. He did it. We're going to find out in the last episode that monk killed his wife with a car bomb. <laughs> oh my God. He did it. That's himself. a, that's a twist. You will mm. never see Next coming. <laughs> Uh, yeah i'm a little i'm a little bit of a downer on the show right now i think if they improve the writing and they just don't make everyone seem so silly compared to like literally ocd mr bean <laughs> like you know like i think it'll be okay but yeah it just didn't the two worlds didn't mix for me in this episode but i think they can so i have hope but it wouldn't it wouldn't make me Fair continue enough. on if we weren't doing this podcast right now. Mm-hmm. We shall see. Um, do we have anything else before we get into what we think is going to happen? <laughs> I'll take I'll take your silence <laughs> as you're ready to do predictions. Uh, Joe, do you want to go first? Sure. Ooh, um, I have that Monk is remarried. I think after nine seasons yeah he's moved oh, on trudy um and there is a scene or i guess there's a couple scenes uh a lot of scenes uh in this pilot where monk is presented with a situation that he's uncomfortable with because of his ocd whether it's yeah, yeah. being in a classroom full of sick gross kids or having to stick his hand in like sewer water he also didn't need to be in that classroom, by the way. There was no Comedy. reason for him to be there. I don't know why. New- yeah, that yeah. scene existed. They were just they wanted they were waiting to talk to the wife. I mean, it was yeah, they wanted to talk to the wife, but he didn't need to be like in that tiny classroom while she was reading it with the newspaper or the cameras yeah. there. He could have yeah. waited out in the hallway or whatever. He didn't <laughs> yeah. need to be there. It was but it was com- to make him feel gross. Um so I think there's another <laughs> I think there's another scene where um Monk is made to feel uh feel feelings about his ocd Uh, and i think it's specifically (laughs) that he gets glitter bombed (laughs) Um, yeah you can't clean up the glitter i like that um also just really quick (laughs) at the at the end of the show when he was like trying to prove to his uh psychiatrist or the the doctor guy who that he was like okay and Mm -hmm. then the elevator opened Mm -hmm. and this like obviously incredibly sick lady was like coughing horribly Mm -hmm. And looked terrible, and she was in the elevator alone. She's no like, one, you no one get would in get this in elevator? that. And I'm like, no, I probably, I'd be like, no, nah, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. yeah, I'm good. Like even pre-COVID, I'd be like, I don't think I want to get in there with you. <laughs> yeah, you so, touched all those buttons. <laughs> yeah, that's not him being OCD. That's just like being like, oh no, what? You're 
<laughs> you're obviously sick. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Joe. Keep so <laughs> he gets remarried, then he gets glitter bombed. Uh, I think, uh, I think in this last mm. episode he solves his wife's murder. I think you know if you open that up at the beginning of the show, oh. you've got to close Josh on solving his wife's murder. Himself. Yeah. I I um, do as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I have that exactly. Josh one. did it. <laughs> no. I I killed I killed his wife. <laughs> yeah, nice. it was me. Um, it was me. That's what I was. Doing. <laughs> Um, and I think the, the murderer is a rival cop. I think that, um, you know, maybe Monk was, you know, building his way up the, the cop ranks and he had a co-worker who wanted to get rid of him. So he, the car bomb (laughs) came from the inside of the house. (laughs) Yeah. So, yep. That's my four. All right. Cool. Uh, I got mine in front of me. My number one, my one one I have that matches Joe's is Monk solves his wife's murder. Mm-hmm. Like we find out who did it. Uh, number two is that a lot of scenes for Monk were silly because he was he would touch stuff or couldn't touch anything, mm-hmm. and then he'd have to like put his hands in his sleeves and stuff mm-hmm. to be able to touch things or do anything. I think in this episode, mm, he finally puts on a pair of gloves. <laughs> Mm. Did you notice he had his own TV remote yeah. inside Eight of a seasons. Ziploc bag? <laughs> Finally to learned use it. That's pretty funny. I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, so I think he wears gloves finally. Uh number three is that Sharona, I think she is with dating or married Ooh. to Monk's partner. His cause I because that just encompasses that I think Monk is a cop fully again, nice. and he has a partner. And Sharona I can see it. is with that guy. Uh, and then number Flippy four. Subs. You know what? You love it. Nice. Blimps. Multiple blimps. Hun- <laughs> yeah, I got uh, 100 blimps are, are no points. No, blimps. just one point. <laughs> At least All one right. blimp. <laughs> Yeah, I get a, sure. I want a point per blimp. <laughs> <laughs> they got blimps in San Francisco. It's possible. There were other shows where it was less possible. I'll oh, say that much. Man. Right. This is true. <laughs> Probably is good. One of these days, there's going to be one. All right. Those are my four. The second you stop saying it, we're going to see so many blimps. I'm going to get it eventually. I'm gonna lose one. I'm okay. Gonna not get a point uh, so I also week had that he solves his wife happening. murder, wife's murder, um, which I feel like, like I want it to be true, but I also feel like your like first season that seems like such a you need like a a solid arc for your fe- first season, don't you? Like that seems like, yeah, maybe a season two, but could be a I, season anyway, one finale. Really yeah, just the same. Um, I think Monk no longer needs a nurse. I think Sharona's dead or gone. Maybe dead and he solves her murder. Maybe car bombed oh, by Stottlemyre. Right. Car bombed. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I do think that Monk is still seeing a therapist. I think that's like a part of the show, like Sopranos style, where there's just – every episode there's scenes with him and his therapist and then i think um supposedly the show was a pretty big deal i think there's a celebrity camera cameo oh nine who is big in oh nine mm. zach braff i mean george clooney is big no, at not. forever <laughs> so <laughs> if we're gonna if we're gonna just barack obama <laughs> just <laughs> Just for fun, if we're guessing which celebrity will be nice. in this, uh, I'm going Clooney. Um, sure, I'll go Obama. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't count against your point, um, Jimmy, if there's another one, but do you got a now specific? I, now I'm just stuck on Zach Braff, and I don't know why. <laughs> that can't be true. When was Scrubs even? All right. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm writing it. I'm, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'd be quite oh, a letdown if it was I, Zach Braff. I think I'm just. Well, I want it to be. You know what? I'd be happy for you if it was Zach Braff. Yeah, Zach Braff yes. riding around in a his blimp. Cameo huh? on Arrested Development, <laughs> season three. 
and now it's stuck in my brain. Okay, that's what I got. Oh. Oh, hey, I did have one more thing Where's about the, the, about uh, Sharona. Did you guys recognize guy? Sharona? Oh. Yeah. She's, yeah, but she's Jimmy, the one she's who cries. The of her own. There's no crying in baseball. Yeah. <laughs> She's just I I had oh, a feeling yeah, that did not this show was going to be Tony Shalhoub and then if anyone someone whose face you're like ah, I know who that is but I don't know who that is because this is this is Shalhoub show <laughs> for sure nice yeah it took me a second but I eventually got there so. All right. Okay. Cool. Let's uh let's watch this last episode, uh, the finale of Monk. It's called Mr. Monk and the End. Since uh, it's a two parter and it only hap- and they happened on different nights, we are only going to be watching part two. So deal with it, and we'll see you after that. And we're back from the finale of Monk called Mr. Monk and the End. We watched only part two. Jimmy, do you have a write-up? I do have a very super short write-up. That is just that. Uh, a videotaped clue from Trudy, Monk's uh, former uh, deceased wife, provides Monk with the clues he needs to solve her murder but he has very little time to catch her killer while finding out what poisoned him. Dun, dun, dun. I um, mean, very little really plot wise technically happened. This episode monk figured out who the killer was. Craig he T. was Nelson. a judge. <laughs> yeah. The coach. <laughs> coach. Uh, he Which found out. I just looked and it's streaming at, on Amazon. So, <sighs> So, Joe, Tune you picking next Coach week. next week? <laughs> <laughs> for, for Coach. Uh, so yeah, happy. so he figured that out. Then he basically ended up confronting Coach and saying, you killed my wife. And then he went to his... Oh, he's Monk's poison this whole time. Going to die. They need to figure out why he's dying. Yeah. He goes to Coach's house and puts a gun at him and makes him dig a hole. And then they find the body of this dead midwife that apparently died around the same time as Trudy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like you should go back to the tape because the tape explained literally everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and according tape. to like a like a one off line, I don't know if they talked more about the tape in the previous episode, but he mm-hmm. was like, "It's just been on my shelf for twelve, like for four years or something like that. <laughs> or I guess yeah. like twelve years now." Yeah. You so, know. Yeah. So Monk has had this like last Christmas present that his wife gave him, um, and he apparently he's had it on Jan the shelf from the office. Yeah, played by Laura played by Jan. Um. So he's had this Christmas gift, her last Christmas gift, on his shelf, and because he she gave it to him like right before he died, or right before she died, um, and he's never opened it, and now he's decided to open it. And there's a like videotape inside and he watches the tape and it's his wife explaining that like she thinks <laughs> if I'm that murdered. like, yeah, she's like, if I'm dead, then you need to watch this. Um, and she says that she had a law professor that she had an affair with like years and years ago, 15 years ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and who, who is this judge played by Craig T. Nelson? Um, she had this affair, she got pregnant, um, and she like gave birth, but the baby died and the midwife who helped her give birth was the one who had recently disappeared. So she thinks that the judge is coming to like, you know, clean that all up and kill the midwife and kill her. So that's why she made this tape thinking that she might die soon, which she did. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, And so like. Uh, like that's what starts this whole thing off and that's why Monk knows it's this guy um, and like later goes over to the judge's house to have him dig something up in his backyard because he suspects that um, there's evidence there and of course it's uh, the body of the midwife is buried there his uh his like logic between it was that the judge had a sundial 
put in his lawn that was like under a tree and he's like Mm -hmm. why would you put a sundial under a tree and it's Mm -hmm. my first thought was just because it's just like a american that liked what a sundial is but yeah, obviously like, can't read it or you know this like, is a nice little bird bath i'm gonna put it in my yard just, yeah it's just a lawn decoration really but yeah so he has them dig and like of course they find the bones the remains of uh what they presume to be the the missing midwife and the judge kills himself <laughs> which uh, is yeah. the, also that's the only way that that would have worked out for monk because he because what he did was he went over to somewhere and pointed a gun at somebody and and like do that held him hostage and made him (laughs) do that while there was other cops just there like pointing guns at monk trying to get him to stop Mm -hmm. and if that i mean if he would have like not killed himself there would have been something involved where it's like you can't even use this evidence anymore because like you, yeah i don't know you know i don't know I the mean, law. it's it's pretty <laughs> wild like so monk is like sick with this poison which mm-hmm. we don't really understand the poison under that it makes you very sick and you, you're gonna die in like a few days um but he like escapes the hospital to go confront this guy at his house and he's like threatening him with a gun to like dig in his backyard and it's like pouring rain monk's clearly sick and like he's like barely able to like hold the gun up and i'm just like can't he just run (laughs) like i don't think that like monk can like physically pull the trigger let alone pull the trigger and aim at a guy running away he could probably could have like ducked behind the tree like one shot and then like jumped the fence i don't know yeah Yeah, i bet he could have gotten away monk gave him a shovel he gave him a weapon (laughs) yeah (laughs) just like knock the gun away when he's like not paying attention and then yeah you're good like he's very sick he's not a threat right now also, like, Monk's not the most imposing physical specimen just when he's healthy, either. Mm-hmm. You know? It's exactly. not like It's not like Monk's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's just, like, a short guy. Yeah. I mean, he was a cop at one point, so presumably he went through, like, you know, a whole, like, combat training and, like, Yeah, marksmanship. knows how to shoot a gun. I mean... I would say eight out of ten cops that are sitting in a patrol car driving around need to be reevaluated for their physical <laughs> ability. So I don't think that he's a cop really proves that he's capable of really doing anything. <laughs> well, in in Hollywood land. <laughs> sometimes when I sometimes when I walk around if you like are outside and you see like a cop and it looks like he's like a jack dude that keeps up, I'm like, All right, there you go. That like it's you know yeah. <laughs> it actually seems like you're trying here you're taking this seriously so i mean speaking of serious i mean this is like a deadly serious moment in the show oh but right before this when monk is in the hospital he's pretty sure that this judge killed his wife um and he's telling the the lieutenant i forget his name but the lieutenant with the mustache um oh the guy that became slotmeyer this the captain slotmeyer or the Uh other guy Okay, I think Slotmeyer or something. Um, but he tells him, like, we know it's this guy. Like, promise me you'll kill him. Like, <laughs> yeah, he makes him promise to murder him. And, like, the, the cop says, like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. And, like, Monk knows he's lying. And so when Monk escapes the hospital, you're like, he's going to go kill this judge because <laughs> yeah. that's what he wants done. And he's, like, in the rain holding this gun, like, asking him to dig and it's like very this is very very serious as far as like a supposed comedy goes but it's still like a little bit silly right like it's still like yeah. mr bean holding a gun in the rain like I, yeah there's part of me that just like i like I, I did giggle at that just like this is still kind of silly even though it's very serious yeah it didn't quite that that's what's hard i think about this show is that it it's it has a hard time i think on a dime kind of going back and forth and choosing when to be because so like we talked about how the cops were like the serious thing in the beginning in the pilot and then in this episode in this finale it was like clear that at least some of what the cops are doing is like shtick like Mm -hmm. this there's like this doofus cop oh you mean like when they were when the captain and the other guy i know that other guy was named randall and he was around from like the beginning actually yeah um 
but when they were driving to go to the judge's house, to coach's house, and then a truck just backed up into the street. But then all of a sudden, when the truck was backed up into the street, the doors of the truck were open and there was a guy standing outside in the back of the truck. Like... (laughs) In the middle in of the, the intersection. In, yeah, <laughs> just in the pouring rain, in the middle of the inter, in intersection. That doesn't seem like, Making why delivery. would a truck be unloading right here? And then the, the captain, police chief guy or whoever, like, pulls his gun out and just shoots a gun, like, a, a bullet in the air. And he gets back into the car and he goes, I guess we do have a, like, a, a siren or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's clear that they're supposed to be, like, dopey, and you're supposed to laugh at them. It's very, very odd dynamic. Good times, though. <laughs> it's kind of goofy, yeah. <laughs> and also, Monk's wife has been killed. <laughs> right. So, so like, yeah, the, the, wife, the judge ends up killing himself. And then right before he kills himself, he goes, take care of her or something like that. Yeah. Yep. And then Monk's like discovers due to that one line that the kid that Trudy and the judge had was still alive and her name was and was like just adopted. Mm-hmm. And she's like 26 years old. So then he goes and finds her and he just ruins this poor girl's life by never leaving her side. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. I get that there's like a, you know, if you're adopted, you want to like find your roots and you want to learn about your parents. And like this girl, Molly, like obviously knew nothing about her family, right? Because uh, she would like her, her parents didn't know like Trudy Monk's wife never found out about the kid still being alive. Right. right. So Molly grew up, you know, for 26 years, not knowing anything about her family. And then this person gets in touch with her. Who's the husband of her dead mom. But like, well, before she even yeah, met like yeah, that mm-hmm. guy even too. So, mm-hmm. so there's like a, a little no bit of a correlation. Yeah. There's a little bit of like a stretch of a relationship there, but it's at least someone that like she could learn about her mom from, right. That's something. Um, right. Yeah. There. It's not weird that they would like want to meet, maybe, and like tell stories and like keep in touch. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Monk takes it way too far. They're like hanging out for like days on end. He keeps taking pictures of her. Um. He like wants to quit his job and just hang out with her. Like. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to. I'm I'm going to Toronto for two weeks. He's like, cool. I'm coming with. And it's yeah, because like, no, she's wait, like a what? film critic, so she's going out to the Toronto Film Festival, and he's just like, yeah, sure, I'll quit my job and just hang out with you for two weeks. Like, really psychotic behavior. Like, <laughs> kind of scary. Right. And all in this entire time, they're actually kind of trying to show how like monks getting better. Yeah, because he yeah. like will go. To, he's like gonna go to the movies, and he like was doing some other stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, there's that we didn't mention the one thing that Natalie girl. She's like the new Sharona, basically. Oh yeah, yeah. It's Monk's new nurse. Yeah, and so she's like, "Oh, you're getting better." And I was mm-hmm. like, "I think he's you're he's he's just transferring the yeah. crazy." <laughs> yeah, his mania is just like being channeled into something else. Now it's just <laughs> torturing this woman. Yeah, and I mean, I guess good for him that she's like a night, like apparently the nicest girl in the world. So she's like, sure, whatever. But she's also like, I'm 26, and I want to uh, like live my own life. Yeah, I mean, as any 26 year old would want to. Right. Exactly. Jimmy, what's up? We can stop here for a second. Are you alive? <laughs> yeah, I'm alive. I'm alive. Uh, <laughs> Does this thing work? I- <laughs> I wasn't seeing any waves, but now I'm seeing uh-huh. waves. <laughs> so okay, we yeah, all see yes, yes, I agree. I'm gonna just mark at 105. All right, we're <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy seemed like he was gonna die. Um, <laughs> you were in like uh testing testing the mic waters. <laughs> we're like, is he is he alive? Is he there? Yeah. Um, and so the one other thing that I noticed, which is that they did is that randall guy who's just kind of like the other cop mm-hmm. this whole time mm-hmm. he was on the phone with people and in the end it turned out that he was 
in a relationship with Sharona. Yeah, twist. They like explicit. I guess. As I guess. I read. Know. No, no, they said it. I mean, it's a twist as far as we know. Maybe we oh, uh, yeah, like yeah. viewers oh, yeah, had yeah. seen them in a relationship, and then she apparently moved to like New Jersey, which I did think. I didn't think until they said that he's he's gonna go become the captain of a new of this precinct in New Jersey, but it was like weird because she definitely had like a New York accent in San mm-hmm. Francisco, <laughs> yeah. And I didn't mm-hmm. think that was weird until this episode, <laughs> <laughs> right? It um, yeah. They I I looked that up because I was like, wait, did I hear that correctly? You know, or was I just trying to wish this happening? Uh, and I guess that guy Randall is like on the phone a lot randomly in the show or something. And he's like arguing with people. And I I guess there's like hints that he is like into Sharona and then he's like into Natalie and whatever. And then I guess in the end, that was like a weird way of them being like, ha ha, he was talking to Sharona. They're like a couple now. Mm. So I guess that was like some sort of reveal. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on this episode? Just in in your your thoughts and feelings. How did it make your heart feel? Uh, the only other thing I was thinking about, so that so so Molly, so he goes, he's gonna go to the movies with Molly, right? And that's like a big deal to Natalie. Right. Like, wait, you're gonna go where there's clearly germs, and he's like wearing some sort of outfit that's not like his normal like wears the same outfit every day so it's like presumably oh and he saw like a therapist of some kind and he's like you seem great that's kind of weird oh also that (laughs) that therapy session was really weird like it was like they were like in a play and they were facing the camera (laughs) and not each other like would you have a therapy session where both chairs are just facing the same direction, so you're not like away from each other, Facing basically? Upstage. I don't know. It seemed weird. That setup seemed weird for a therapy session to me. Yeah, it was a little odd. Yeah, I, I think just like the one thing that I keep coming back to is that it's just wild to me that this whole thing, this whole episode, got kicked off by him finding a videotape um, that it just explains his wife's murder. Like, and he's had this in, <laughs> in his possession for all this time. Like, like I understand that he wasn't this like super cop, like OCD guy, like back then probably, but like he's right. at least a detective and it's like your wife was murdered, like, and not even just like random, like mugging that went bad or something like car bomb. Like, like someone was trying to like explicitly like murder your wife. They were trying to like eviscerate her. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Just like, uh, just yeah. Like, the, isn't like the first thing they ask like, you know, like it, is there anyone that um you think would hold a grudge or is anyone trying to hurt her? And like you would think that he would just like turn every stone and just like look through all of their shit, yeah. look for any evidence of any sort of secrets and stuff and stuff like like you gotta open that christmas present like it's the last thing she gave like yeah well just also yeah in a couple weeks of her dying or something you'd be like oh man this present i haven't had time to like think about it because Mm -hmm. you know all the crazy but maybe i should open this present my wife gave me and just like cherish this now Mm -hmm. hopefully yeah Yeah, i guess I, i wonder when he felt like he was going to like open it maybe maybe he like wasn't going to open it until he solved the murder that'd be ironic oh gosh (laughs) like just as this memory of of her you know i mean i mean Mm -hmm. because on one hand it's like it was around christmas this presence under the tree you're probably not thinking that it's you know she's giving you a gift that's literally because then she says in the tape if this is nothing, I'm going to take out this tape, mm-hmm. not tell you these secrets that we've been yeah. married for years and you don't know, and give you a digital watch. <laughs> Hope it was a nice freaking watch. <laughs> Hope it has one of those buttons where you, you press it and it glows in the dark. Ah, sweet. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm just trying to think. I don't know. I mean, I don't think there's any way for me to find this out now by any means. But my first thought was just like, do we know like through eight seasons? Are we aware that this there's like this present that he refuses to open? Is it like a thing I or did it. it just come up in part one of this fun of this finale? Because <laughs> if it just came up, I hate the show so much. <laughs> I I mean yeah I, obviously I don't know but I it it feels to me like this is this is written in like how are we gonna end this show writers like okay how how's he gonna f- discover his, his wife's killer it's like okay he had this thing the whole time it, it, it feels last minute writing to man, me man if they talked about it though throughout the seasons just every once in a while like one one episode yeah. a season he was just kind of like oh man this present even once right? i'm just not, i'm just not cool with time. it yeah it just would have been like wow way to set that up but like, i don't feel like that was the case yeah <laughs> but if they would it would have been like genius way to go way to just like be prepared but i'm sure they didn't yeah literally if it like Season one, you know, he's already clearly going through his wife's, like, he's got, like, crime, whatever. He's got evidence, or not evidence, but he's, like, looking at photos of the car wreck, and he's got oh, articles clipped out. Mm-hmm. Could be there's a present there somewhere. I just did some quick Googling, and the, like, unopened present shows up in a few Christmas episodes. Okay. Oh. So the seed is at least planted there that there's something there. So, so there is a so present Josh that Josh loves he, this show. I didn't say I love it. <laughs> That's I just show of, ever now. I just officially don't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, glowing review from Josh. <laughs> I mean, it, it changed a little bit. I am I am I mean, here's here's my final review on Monk. I'm I'm very I'm curious to a point of how they mold how how in like when they get farther into season one and then up maybe two once they definitely have footing if they mer if they that comedy monk and seriousness actually works and it just doesn't make it seem like there's just dumb people and monk setting monk up for like being smart and acting yeah. smart like if that right the writing f- works um, yeah. I'm not going to watch any more of the show to find that out, <laughs> but I'm curious. I so. will say, so watching this right off the bat, and I already mentioned Psych, but I feel like watching the pilot was like, oh, this is where Psych got their entire premise. And I think that show does it better from what I've seen as far as like, this is a comedy but also people die and like, <laughs> and that's kind of crazy and they're solving murders and stuff, but like it keeps it. There's, it's just like, there's a lightness throughout and it, there's just maybe a better, a better balance. And I also feel like the writing of, of all the little things that you could it, throughout uh, monk where I was caught off guard. Like, Oh, that's, that's a weird thing that happened. Like, he, they they shouldn't know where the shooter is <laughs> after they just explained how you couldn't know where the shooter is i feel like that kind of stuff would never happen and it's like it's always like really uh detailed like writ like the way they there's definitely like a formula which you could you could figure out but like it's just maybe better written but i do love me some tony shalhoub and if you haven't seen um yeah. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is a prime show. He plays a, he, he's a supporting character in that. And he's just, God, he's just so a treasure. Shaluba stank. Treasure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Also, he was in men in black. Remember that? I remember that movie. I alien. don't remember him. I don't remember him being in it. <laughs> he's the alien who I, the, I think, uh, Will Smith shoots his head off and it grows back. Yeah, and it's like oh, that was Tony Shalhoub. I'm pretty sure that was Tony oh, Shalhoub. Man, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> wow, um, Joe, what were your what are your closing thoughts on Monk? Um, you know, whatever. 
I think I think that you know that sums it up. That I'd probably rather watch Psych than this, but yeah. it, it was H not HBO, USA's like kind of first big show of that era. So without this, there probably isn't a Psych. So there's that. Yeah, that's fair. I I feel like as long as you maybe don't come at this show with a critical eye and you're just maybe watching it for dumb the fun too, it probably holds up a little bit better. Yeah, you just want to have a little like Encyclopedia Brown adventure. Yeah, yeah. But the minute you start coming <laughs> at this show that you want it to like you want the plot to make full sense and you want the the genres to merge well. Um at least from what I've seen it's not it's not a show for you. <laughs> I will say there was like they had a um a montage clip show like right at the end. Oh, yeah. Um and there was a little clip with like the lieutenant, the captain guy, uh in like an interrogation room with a chimpanzee that was holding a gun and I would just like wanna know what that's about. <laughs> like it looked like he was like yelling at the chimp and the chimp was like waving the gun around. So Yeah. I I'd, might I'd watch that. Yeah, just see what's going on there. That looked like some Brooklyn Nine Nine stuff. That was their original idea on who killed Trudy. <laughs> oh, the chimp. It's the chimp. Of um, course. I, I was into the Randy Newman all of a sudden. That kind of gave it a lighter. <laughs> yeah, there was like several Randy Newman songs in Is this, this. Like the theme song. Yeah, and then there was a sad kind of Randy Newman at the end. Mm-hmm. I, I like definitely. That internally was like is that randy newman is that 100 <laughs> percent. also um another show i'd i'd like to do one of these days is if it's streaming is two guys a girl and a pizza place which is what natalie is from hmm. okay trailer, I, yeah i knew she was in Howard. some show but i didn't know That's what a, uh, early ryan reynolds oh boy some r and r if it's streaming we'll find it <laughs> Get on that research, Jimmy. Uh, should we review our predictions and see how we did? Yeah. Joe, you went first, so you should do I that did. again. I did. Um, I said Monk is remarried, and I thought that was going to be the gimme, but apparently mm. not because he is still very much single. Nope. Yeah. He might try to marry his uh, not daughter. Yeah. Uh, it, the way ew. that's Because <laughs> well, she reminds him so much of his wife. It's I weird. thought for yeah. sure you it's had that point, point <laughs> because because uh, Jane or whatever was not the actress Jan from the mm-hmm, Office. Mm-hmm. I already forgot her name again. Oh yeah, because Jan was not who tr- who played Trudy in the first episode. Yeah, so I was like, oh, he is with someone. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> and it turns out that that was yeah years ago, and his wife duked me out. Um, and then I said he gets glitter bombed. Uh, and he didn't, and there, he didn't even really have like, there wasn't anything that happened to him that would have triggered a like OCD episode either. Um, no, he didn't have too much like uh, OCD ness, but he mm-hmm. was just preoccupied being poisoned. He's poisoned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did like turn. He did check the oven knobs again at the end. I don't know if you saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I said that he solves his wife's murder, which he did. Boom. Yes, he did. Point. Um, and then that the murderer is a rival cop and it wasn't, it was uh, a judge who is his wife's law professor. So no point for that. Fair yeah. enough. But you got the one. Got the one. Yeah. Um, all right. So mine were Monk solves his wife's murder. Mm-hmm. Ding, ding. Got that one. Um, I thought he finally wears gloves to quell his OCD-ness, but he didn't really have to deal with any of that nor did he wear gloves just at all anyway mm-hmm. um one that uh i'm that would have saved gunning, his life actually <laughs> right <laughs> one that i'm gunning yeah actually potentially well he was it was a wipe that poisoned him so if we wiped yeah, him in his face then his he face, would have yeah um sure. one that i want to i want to i want to ask for a half a point for was that uh sharona is with monk's partner um, she's with the cop that like hangs out with Monk a bunch, but I guess they're not technically partners. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I could give that half a point. He, she's he with works a cop. with Monk closely, right? Yeah, yeah. It seems like yeah. those two cops work with Monk. So, yeah, I can't give me. I can't believe it, half. but I give you half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Um, and then obviously the last one is a blimp, and I saw no blimps, so I'll take one point five. Um, I could also maybe ask for half a point because I said <laughs> that Sharona is dead or gone. Um, but I also kind of in, in that same prediction said that Monk no longer needs a nurse, but he has Natalie, so. Uh, that was just a it's just a confusing uh, prediction. <laughs> Monk no longer needs a nurse. Dash dead or gone. He definitely needs a nurse, and we do mm-hmm. know that she's not dead. She's not dead. She's yeah. just gone. She's gone. Mm-hmm. So half a point. <laughs> yeah, I might give that a half. She is she is gone. <laughs> she's gone. She was only in forty episodes of the show, apparently. Oh. The girl, the woman who played actually more than I assumed. I thought maybe she was a be a one season or even like a pilot. Although, mm-hmm. although maybe it, that first one wasn't really the pilot because it wasn't called pilot. There probably was another pilot. Anyway, then I said uh, uh, I didn't see a celebrity cam cameo. Oh um, yeah, neither did I. I mean, unless you Craig consider Coach. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I'll be. I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I didn't. I I saw that and I said, "Hey, it's Coach," but I didn't think celebrity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Not. Yeah, okay. Um, still seeing a therapist? Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And then, uh, and then solves his wife's murder, which honestly, like, so obviously we all got that. I have a, I'm having a hard time thinking of like okay at the end of season one, like so so what was season one all about then that keeps you, just like just that keeping you like going season after season being like the big thing it seems like why would you keep watching this, <laughs> as much as I you know, love it overarching <laughs> story still, yeah, hmm. I don't know, you just love just, the quirky monk you know yeah. Maybe he gets an arch nemesis along yeah. the way. It could be kind of interesting if he's like solving his wife's murder that first season and like he thinks he almost has it, but then it turns out that his theory is just wrong and it falls through. Mm. Yeah. That could be kind of interesting. Keep you wanting for more. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. The the last at scene of the first season is him reaching for the present on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> and then the first scene of season two uh, premiere is like the doorbell rings. So he looks away and stops reaching for it and then forgets about it till season eight. <laughs> uh, so Joe, next Christmas, you watching some um, <laughs> monk Christmas episodes? I might. I, there's four Christmas episodes apparently. Oh, dang. So, yeah, yeah. Monk liked Christmas. All right, Monk. Nice. Monk, monk, monk liked monk loved christmas it was when his wife died yeah it was around that time that his oh. wife died it's very special to him it's pretty sad. special so pretty <laughs> special time of the year oh my gosh well hey everybody thanks for listening to this episode of first and last number 175 holy buckets it was called monk Dang. um you know you know what we think watch it at your own risk if you dare um <laughs> But uh, that's going to do it for us this week. If you would like to make some show suggestions or just get a hold of us for various other reasons, you can hit us up at FNLpodcast on Gmail or on the Twitters. And then if you're feeling so inclined, subscribe in five stars on whatever you're listening to us on right now. That'd be great. Um, We'll see you next week uh, when Joe picks Coach for his show. (laughs) (laughs) Or a different show. We'll find out. But we'll see you then. Goodbye. Don't don't stop. <laughs> can we cl- can we clap again? <laughs>